Hi guys and welcome back to Hearthstone Champions League. My name is Nimsh and I'm here with Raven. We're going to witness Dog vs. Colento. This is an elimination match. They both lost already and whoever wins advances to fight 6-0. And then they will have to win. Raven, what do you think? Yeah, this is going to be a good match. Um, the one thing to bear in mind is Colento only sh uh, showed one of his decks in his first match that he lost to. He only showed his Maligos Warlock. So the other two decks are a slight mystery. We can see now that uh, one of them is Druid, and Druid's never too much for a mystery in general, so that's pretty uh, okay for Dog. But Colento will definitely know uh, Dog's lineup by now. And yeah. Dog getting off to a pretty quick start as well. Oh, man, I'm just looking at his wild growth, and is he just going for... Oh man, Innervate and Hero Power, so he re really recognizes the power of the Shaman in the early game because I was thinking Shredder on 4 and Dr. Boom on 5 would be pretty good, but apparently Colento feels like those two minions can challenge Shredder, they can deal enough damage, so he is feeling better with just playing the Shredder and uh, taking it, well, a bit more aggressively I guess. Yeah, it's definitely rough because the problem is looking at Clento's hands. Like, yeah, Force of Nature can be uh, not Force of Nature. Sorry, Savage Roar can be used to you know kill a two health minion if need be. But it is three mana. He does have the Shredder, but everything else just feels bad. He really needs to hold on till turn six and use Force of Nature to clear some of the smaller minions off the board. Dog goes for ancestral knowledge. Even though he had a possibility to play Elemental Golem, he opted for the fact that he needs more cards, and I. I think this matchup is actually good versus Druid if uh, if you have this kind of start as well, like a really fast start when you can deal damage early, put the Druid lower and then just try to accumulate your spells, Lava Burst, Lava Shocks, Crackles and Burst Druid down because you know Druid will stabilize at some point in this in this game. But then... Yeah, and, and what Doug did there was he actually, in not playing the Totem Golem because he had the option to draw more cards, he actually still presented Kalento with a good swipe. Um, and then if the swipe was done, uh, used, then he would have, you know, then followed up with a Totem Golem. So now he's sort of, he's made a presumption that Clanto doesn't have it, and he needs to follow up with something anyway. So the Golem does go down, but we can see the swipe in hand now from Clanto. Yeah, an elemental distraction for Dog. So he is playing it, actually, and uh, he will be able to wipe the board if more minions show up. But for now, Clanto is just trying to kill whatever he can and pressure back. This is a race. This is a race, Raven. Yeah, um, D Dog is actually probably starting to get a little bit worried depending on what his draw is and not being able to play Doomhammer this turn is pretty rough because the problem now is we're only a couple of turns away from Kalento being able to combo him and he's going to be very easily ranged by then. So Dog's really going to have to think about, do I need to take the Shredder off the board? And without Earthshock, that's a little bit rough actually. How much damage is there? So you can Lava Shock face, uh, put Kalento at 13 and the next turn you can deal 7 with a Doomhammer and Lightning Bolt and then follow up with Lava Burst so or you can play um, Totem Golem this turn like I, I think you have to play Lava Shock right? You play Ancestor Knowledge so you need to um, get those, those mana crystals. Yeah, I think like you're right, he has to, because the problem is, by that time, because Kalento is actually ahead of him in mana, he's going to hit like the combo turn before Dog hits his turn now. So um, he, he definitely needs to put uh, enough pressure on to make Kalento sort of, uh, try and play a bit more awkwardly, because at the moment, although Kalento's on low health... Oh, where's the, sorry, like, where's the landing ball going to go? Oh, man, he oh it's just going to go fair, okay. So this is putting Kalento in a... Uh, a very uh, worrying mode here, although Dr. Boom is the only real play if he ever wants to win this game. Uh, how much damage is there this turn now? Uh, from Dog? Uh, not enough, Ooh. because he used the Lightning Ball. Oh. <laughs> but, uh, oh, I mean, it wouldn't have mattered if he didn't use yeah. it right, because then he wouldn't have had the damage, but Dog literally being one mana crystal off winning this game, and it actually looks like it's going to go to Kalento, because Kalento's representing a hell of a lot of damage, and he has Savage Roar in hand. Is there a way uh, to get out of this with uh, elemental destruction somehow? Getting the bombs to face? Not really. Like, Savage Roar, Dr. Boom will still survive. Yeah, I think that's the issue because it's not like um, he had the Rock Biter and the Lightning Bolt the other way around. So he could have, say, Elemental Destruction and Lightning Bolt the, uh, the Dr. Boom. So this is going to be pretty rough being so close but, uh, but so far at this point. And that's basically it. And with the Savage Roar, Colento is taking game number one versus Dog. That Shaman was so close, as you mentioned, but uh, so far away at the same time. Yeah, I think Kalento being able to 
just about hold on on that board where there was the abusive sergeant and two lepidomes. He didn't go into swipe, and then having the following turn to kill off the golem uh, and the uh, the two one was really good because it meant that he emptied the board and suddenly dog was having to use the. Uh, the, the card draw then to just try and refill the hand and gain um, more pressure and unfortunately for Dog it just wasn't quite enough. Very close though. I wonder if there was a play with um, Lava Shock later on turn 6 basically to get the Mana Crystals out but uh, it's really hard to say but we're now jumping into game 2. It's Paladin from Colento and uh, the same Shaman from Dog so this is again a good matchup for Dog I believe. Yeah, it is, except the Cog Hammer can actually uh, ruin Dog's day quite heavily. Um, so Kalento does actually throw it, which, uh, it, because of his hand, was bound to. But if Kalento say, had, like, a 1-drop, 2-drop, then the Cog Hammer is insane on 3, just to provide a really uh, awkward target for Dog to deal with without an Earth Shock. But Dog's hand's looking a little bit better than last game, I think. And he's playing Flame Juggler as well. I really like the card in this kind of Shaman deck. If it hits face... You're one damage closer to lethal. <laughs> <laughs> and if it kills the 1-1, one, one, even better. Exactly. And it snipes the 1-1. One, one. Good good job, F uh, Flame Juggler. You did well there. Colento has a terrible hand. He was mulliganing specifically for 1-drop and 2-drop because he needed minions to find the early aggression from Shaman. But he didn't get it. Now he has a, a very awkward, in a very awkward situation with a lot of 4-drops. Yeah, because the good thing about Feral Spirit is Consecrate doesn't really do too much. So he's uh, going to be forced to make a different play. The Keeper of Alderman is really nice. He can kill off one whilst the 3 one's still living, which is pretty key. So now he has two 3-attack minions that can deal with the board. Uh, it's just going to depend on what Dog chooses to do now. Well, Dog has a good way to deal with the 3-1. Yeah, I think he can afford, like, because the thing as well is for the uh, Keeper of Alderman to kill the... Uh, the Feral Spirit taunt that's left, well that just slows Kalento down even more, right? And Dog still has a lot of damage and a lot of options, and getting Doomhammer on 5, really nice. It is it's excellent. Gonna actually kill off one of the minions to make it even more awkward for Kalento to keep this uh, keep this board as clean as possible. Aside from the Brock Batter Doomhammer combo, Dog doesn't have um, many more spells, but he will have this Airshock for a possible taunt if one shows up. And uh, he has Ancestral Knowledge, so he will be able to get spells eventually. And uh, Colento is just uh, trying to defend, but with that opening hand, there was not much he could do, He could have done. Yeah, there's a few options for Dog here now. He can uh, go for the Earth Shock and then uh, on the Shredder, just to get it off the board really cleanly. And uh, it's going to go for the Knowledge to draw and, you know, a little bit more damage. Uh, the Lightning Bolt and the Abusive. The Doom Hammer having that in hand now, the second one. Pretty unfortunate because it's not too common for secret paladins to run uh, weapon removal. I was just going for the damage. Yeah, why not? I have lightning bolt and I have a weapon home. There is a huge difference between the, this game um, and the druid game because uh, with druid, druid has the buffs. Druid has the way to to reach and kill you as you're a shaman, but paladin doesn't. Paladin just has to fight for the board, and then when he wins the board, he needs a couple of turns to kill you. But in this situation, Kalanto doesn't have a way to kill and doesn't have a way to survive. Yeah, he can, um, on board at least, survive one more turn with the True Silver to hit face to heal out of the Doom Hammer. But we can see that with the Lightning Bolt, he could even get flashy, hit with Doom Hammer, and then play Light uh, Lepin Elm and Lightning Bolt his own Lepin Elm. Absolutely. Yeah, it feels like it, but yeah, it's a pretty quick game, Dog doing pretty well there, and you really see what happens uh, to Secret Paladin against an aggressive deck when they don't draw, say, the mini bot or the early juggler or pretty much anything just to contest the first few turns, because we saw Kalento hero power pass on turn three. Imagine if that was muster. Yep, that would be absolutely different, but now we have a tie one to one, and the players will have to grab uh, other decks. So from Kalento, we've seen the Druid. Uh, which is already locked, uh, Paladin will have to stay. Um, and there is the Mali lock as well that he can pick that we've seen in the first game versus Stan Sivka. From Dog, we've seen a Zoo deck. So is this um, a Mali lock versus Zoo, apparently? Yeah, it looks to be. And uh, already Kalento's open hand looks pretty reasonable. I imagine the Zero Drake's going to go back in the deck. But Zombie Chow into Peddler oh, and man. now a Dart Bomb. That's the anti-aggro opening you want. Yeah, and uh, him gangles as well, so, it, well, it doesn't look like a zoo, but this is the, the best you can get with the small minions in this kind of a, a 
And Malik is, uh, Malik is dying. Dog, on the other hand, well, he is actually playing Zombie Chow in his own zoo. Yeah, that's interesting. See, that's just to sort of combat other aggro decks to give you a slight advantage, because Zombie Chow, uh, its stat line lines up like, well against other aggro decks, which is why the card's so good. But it, it's an odd pick in a zoo deck, to be honest. It is, but uh, you know, Zudek, um, as opposed to, for example, the face shaman, right? It doesn't uh, go face that often. It's mostly about minion trading and, and board position. You want to be ahead on board and just keep being ahead on board and eventually just uh, kill your opponent. Uh, so I, I, I think I like the, the Zombie Chow. Yeah, this is nice. Do you think there's um, any need to coin the Void Caller out to make the Chow quite uh, ineffective on its next turn for Kalento? Because so, um, he could Spider coin Void Caller, for example, have the Spider there and do some things next turn, but he also has coin for Dark Knight Dwarf next turn if he wants to go straight into the fourth drop. Yeah, that's exactly uh, one thing. And the other thing is that if he does use the coin this turn, he will not have a free drop. So he will be floating some mana. And I don't think there is a need for the Void Walker at this point. Okay, yes. so Colento picked up another anti-aggro card, which is Hellfire, and it might help him a lot. So for now, it seems uh, that he has a great hand. He just needs one dragon for the Corruptor to work as well. Uh, but Doug it doesn't have a bad hand himself. Yeah, I think if you can get this um, this Nerubian Egg Live as well, which looks like he is going to drop down with the two tokens. The Imp Gang Boss is so good versus decks like this. So Colento is going to be able to uh, just generate uh, one ones to then fight for the board, so so the mini implosions every turn, and he does actually have the dart bomb to kill off the void caller, um, the void walker, sorry, and then the gang boss can just pick off one of these one ones if he like, because he probably wants to use the gang boss to start trading, because if power overwhelming on the egg into the gang boss happens, then you've only gained one uh, token as opposed to multiple. Yeah. He also picked up the Silence, decides not to use it this turn, because there's a lot of good Silence targets um, in a zoo deck. So if he feels like he still has a way to deal with the Neruvian Egg, maybe Silence it next turn if there's no power of me. Yeah, I think one of the things with the Egg as well is you really want to silence it and then try and kill it off, because at the end of the day, it's still a token that can be power overwhelmed. And if it's a token, then it's worth nothing to the Warlock at that point anyway. So the, the point of like, it dying from the power overwhelming is, is a bit insignificant because it was doing nothing regardless. Oh man, is he going for soul fire? Will he oh, here we go. Person? That's okay, a that's, It's not not too bad to throw away as he doesn't even have a dragon at the moment and he does have Thorison for next turn, so his turn six is banked anyway, and then he can, you know, move up with the, the gang boss and uh, probably the squire, maybe Hellfire the following turn. <laughs> and there's Craptor actually coming back. But what I like about those decks like uh, Malagos and how Polento plays plays it at the moment, uh, he changes the game plan a bit. So normally Soulfire is a combo card you want to cast with Malagos. He risks uh, discarding Thorison, but um, it's not like he's going to win with Malagos combo. Well, see, he still can, but he, you're just using cards which you normally use in a different way to just counter the strategy from Zoo. You know you have to be as aggressive as possible early on uh, to be able to grab the board pr uh, position and then maybe with the other cards uh, come back and, and deal the important damage. Yeah, and um, having the Thorison down effectively is a 5-5 taunt in most matches. And that caused Dog to commit quite a lot to this board, and he still hasn't cleared it. And he actually threw away Bran, um, which is rough, and their Direwolf, which is really good in Zoo, because you play with so many, like, you know, uh, sort of flurry of low minions, and then the Direwolf can get so much value. And he, he ended up keeping the Owl and the coin, where he's probably wanted to throw at least the coin away. Yeah, and now he is uh, with that coin, which is uh, basically useless because Zoo can play most of the minions uh, without the coin. So if Colento goes for the Hellfire this turn, uh, that will leave Dog with only an Iron Beak and coin, and Dog will have to start tapping aggressively to be able to to get something. Yeah, it's going to be rough. Like the problem with, with Zoo, you normally even float in mana because you can't afford, as you said, to just throw away minions. But Kalento following up with a, a full board player, zero mana squire in there, in gang boss. I was going to be feeling pretty rough straight into tap. Uh, so Void Walker and Abuse of Sergeant. Not exactly the impactful cards he needs. Yeah, small minions, and you <laughs> keep the coin and try to bluff that it's actually a card you can play. And I hope maybe Kalento will actually forget I never play the coin. Yeah, there's always that possibility. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be probably for players of this caliber. You know, Clint's probably going to keep track of that coin pretty well. 
Uh, oh, okay. So the discover choices aren't too amazing. Joust Although I imagine the, the joust is going to happen purely because the curve is higher in Maligos than anything else, than the Zulok. I believe it's still tap, uh, so if you get a dragon, you'll be in an amazing position. If you don't get a dragon, uh, the the problem with tapping is that you'll not be able to play uh, abusive, but uh, I think it's still worth it. Oh, and that heal bot probably seals the deal. I'd be very impressed if Dog can uh, pull this one out of the bag with a heal bot follow-up. Look at that joust, Raven. <laughs> it was the second Doom Guard. It was pro probably the only card that would, uh, well, win the Joust. There was also implosions possible um, to not lose it, but there was a great chance to win the Joust. But uh, it's, he lost the Joust, won the game. Yeah, so uh, pretty, pretty decent uh, game there for Clento, and that's going to be 3-1, right? Clento takes the game. That's 2-1. Oh, was that 2-1? Yeah, he still has oh, okay. to win with his Paladin deck that lost uh, miserably to Shaman. Oh, it's, I'm so used to seeing a uh, Secret Paladin just win. I, uh, I just presumed it had won, but yeah, my, my bad it is 2-1. Uh, so but still, Secret Paladin is the last deck for Colento, and he has two chances to win with it. He will be facing that Zoo deck, and the last deck for Dog... Let me quickly check what that was. That was a Mage, so a Tempo Mage from Dog to face uh, that Secret Paladin. It, I, I think it has a really decent chance to take it. Yeah, Dog's definitely got uh, two decks that can actually do pretty well versus the Secret Paladin, I think. Um, again, the, the Zoo deck probably really wants to get Implosion early on, just to build the board up, uh, and really challenge all the sort of low minions from the Secret Paladin, but Dog's hand's looking okay. Maybe two powerful Wellmins is a little bit heavy, but going straight into it, the, uh, the Flame is pretty nice, actually. It means he doesn't have to coin into Dark Peddler, which you probably feel forced to do. Yeah. And uh, that shield and me bot is great for Colento because his hand was a bit weird. He had the uh, Master for Battle, but two secrets. The secrets like Repentance versus Zoo in the very beginning of the game will not work. And Tyrion is light years from being played. Yeah, the game could actually be decided before turn 8 regardless in this deck. So you're completely right. And imagine the Repentance on the egg. Just, let's just make it even easier to proc. <laughs> yeah. um, but with two power of well means that was probably never an issue anyway. The second flame imp's pretty nice, but as you said, this mini bot is just it's such a pain for you to deal with. As we can see, the two health minions are gonna just be slaughtered and also Doug doesn't know what this secret is. Well he knows it's not repentance, that's about it. Well, now he knows it's noble sacrifice, uh, so he yeah. lost the imp. Uh, it's pretty good There's for There's a shake of the head from Doug as well. Yeah. Not happy. He hoped it's something else. And now he's losing the imps. This means Colento has a chance to, to build up a board, and uh, there is nothing to punish Master for Battle, I believe. Yeah, it's a tough one. It's, um, it's whether you expect something a little bit bigger uh, for, to be able to squeeze the Repentance in. Because the problem with Master for Battle, it creates the tokens, but the weapon doesn't really do anything. Yeah. Um, I, I, it, on that turn specifically, obviously the weapon's pretty good in the matchup overall. Whereas this, he can create tokens anyway, it makes a bit of an awkward board for Doc to deal with. So uh, the Creeper Secret was nice. So Doc goes for pushing. face because there is no good target and Colento <laughs> will be the one trading a knife juggler. <laughs> well, with the egg on 1 HP. Hmm. Okay, I was weighing up, do you actually just hero power and then juggle and muster next turn? <laughs> just to get, just for all the juggles, but pretty good for Kalento that he didn't play juggler this turn. Um, because Implosion is looking really nice to to at least even up the board, I think. I think it's going to be rough. He, power of Overwhelm into face just feels terrible, but Power of Overwhelm into a 1-1 one, one feels just as bad. What about Implosion to a 1-1? One, one? Uh, hmm. That might it, be... He might have to though, right? Either that or tap, but with tap you run the risk of passing because he can't just play juggler for it to die for no reason. Yeah, the thing is like, even if you if you tap and play juggler to lose it, you're not taking much damage, but then you're a losing initiative because Colento, you expect Colento to play something on five. Hmm. Yeah, it's really tough. Do you just, do you just assert dominance and double PO and go face? <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. be like, I, yeah, this is how the game's going to go. You will die eventually. <laughs> yeah, well, a 4-4 four four would be a nice minion to get, but yeah, I think you have to implosion one of the dudes. And that's what he does. Now, how high does he roll? Three, okay. Higher than that, you know. Pr Decent. Pretty reasonable. It challenges the board a little bit, at least. 
And Keeper of Uldaman is nice pickup um, by Colento. It's literally a 5-6. Yeah, it's such a good card. And the reason it's so good as well is the situations like this where you just put more power on the board and make your tokens even more powerful. But also the, it's the flexibility. So like if a Doom Guard came down and he drew his other one, then you can just reduce a Doom Guard, a 5-7 to 3-3, three, three, which makes it so much more manageable. Yeah, I just love the card. It's, it's really flexible and um, can be used in any situation. But uh, it's, go it's going to die to the power overwhelming. Uh, we're going to see Knife Juggler first. Uh, can he still tap this turn? If you tap... I think he probably wants to juggle a Voidwalker, then PO the egg. Yeah. Uh, I think that's probably... Because he gains two juggles there, which might be a little bit dangerous because the Creeper, but Voidwalker does a good job of at least soaking up some attacks. Just go for the tap instead, though. Yeah, so he feels like he needs more cards to win this uh, over time. Uh, this 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 one is a nice turn anyway. Like he's getting that juggle and a four four, but uh, with only the cards he had in hand, like P a second PO is really reactive, and you feel like you're going to lose the minions anyway. Uh, Voidwalker wasn't doing that much. Like the difference between having Voidwalker on board and uh, not having that extra card was actually too big for Doc. So he wanted to have uh, a yeah. card. Yeah, that's completely right. And um, we are going to see the muster, I imagine. The power of Knife Juggler when you have Creeper to pop and the muster to play. <laughs> yeah, I feel like he might actually keep um, the Haunted Creeper here. But what will be the sequence? So what you can do maybe is attack into the 4-4 with the 3-2 and then slam Master and see if uh, something survives. If something survives, yeah. you just kill it with a weapon. But uh, there is a lot of different uh, decisions here to be made. So as you mentioned, it can be a Haunted Creeper attack first, um, then decide where you where the knives go. You still have a lot of knives that you can actually throw. Yeah, because what's good here is you can throw the three two away. As you oh wow, perfect juggles, and he can save the Creeper. Yeah. Because I'm pretty sure you just trade that and you face him. Oh, he's just oh he's just going for it. Well, with the Creeper um, destroyed. You get two more damage to face. So it's not. That's it's true. And and I suppose he's not really too fearful of AoE from a zoo deck. Yeah. Once the zoo loses the board, there's no real coming back from it unless you have some sort of goblike defender of Argus, which we can see is, is not the case. And one super secret Shadow Flame. Play the dog. <laughs> that Shadow Flame tech in zoo. Well, there is oh, a secret is... keeper, so it won't do much. Uh, getting some mims here. <laughs> But so this is going to be rough. Is there even an out here now for Dog? Um, I don't. Well, he he does play some, but he will need it. So I, I mentioned that uh, the Styrian was light years away, but apparently Colento is Han Solo and he made it um, a bit faster. He's and, going to play oh. the next turn. Yeah. Okay, so does he survive here? I mean, he's, I think he survives it one, two. Yeah, he survives this turn. But then when Tyrion comes down, I, is there enough? He need, I don't think he'll have the minions to pop the shield and kill Tyrion and defend against a uh, an Ashbringer. So this might actually just spell the end after this Tyrion. I'm surprised Dog's actually uh, still still in the game at the moment. Well, he maybe will just want to see what card he draws, just in case, you know? Faceless Manipulator? Owl? No? All oh, these crazy tech... I don't want to play you if you play Zoo on that. <laughs> I don't want to run into you if you run in these crazy cards that are super unexpected. Well, I, I, I don't run them and apparently Dog didn't as well. So Dog is, unfortunately for him and his fans, eliminated from the tournament. Uh, that was Group A with, uh, with Dog uh, being knocked out. Colento is still alive. And he will face 6-0 in the next round. So Stan Sivka already advanced to our top 8. Then Colento versus 6 -0. One of them will be eliminated. One of them is going to advance. And uh, guys, you're watching Hearthstone Champions League. We have a $10,000 prize pool. We have 4 days of games. And then the 5th for the playoffs. Today's Group A. We will close it. We'll finish it. Then tomorrow Group B. And on Thursday and Friday Group C and D. We have a lot of great players every day. All right, so I think we are ready to go into the breaks. So give us some time. We'll prepare the next match, uh, Colento versus Sixo, and we'll see who is going forward and who is going to get eliminated. Thank you so much for watching so far. Stay tuned for more Hearthstone after the break.